Hey there, hi there, ho there. Today we are going to change out the brake pads because it's time to change the brake pads. Okay, so how do you change the brake pads on a motorcycle? It's a little bit different than on a car. And usually I'm doing all of this stuff myself, but today I have my wonderful assistant, Van, because I couldn't afford Vanna. And he's gonna be handing me things as we go through the list of things that you should have to start this project, okay? So the first thing that we need, the most important thing, is a bass. What do you mean you don't know what a bass is? The big ass screwdriver, that's a bass. Okay, so we got our bass. Next, what do we need, Dan? Here. The mechanic's gloves. We need some gloves, because it's dirty work and it gives you better grip. Okay, what next? The beer. No. <laughs> no, next we need the tools. Now for my Triumph Tiger, I need an eight millimeter hex. All right, so before you start, check out either in your manual or by visual inspection, what tools you're going to need, okay? So we got our eight millimeter hex, and now we probably need... Beer? No! We need shop towels and cleaner. So, okay, we got the shop towels and cleaner, awesome. I'm gonna put them up here so you have them in easy reach, okay? Because I'm gonna be down there. Then what else do we need? Beer. No, not the beer. We need the brake pads. Now count them, make sure we got four because there's two sets of dual disc. We got four? That would be four. We got two sets. All right, we are good to go on that. Good, okay, I'll put those over here so you can reach them to hand them to me. All right, so now what do we got? Is it time for beer? Hey, you got it right. Awesome. Okay. So, well, now wait a minute. We got to tell everybody what the beer is for. And we got to rank it. So, we've got a whole damn six pack. So, how many beers do you think this job qualifies for? Using the six pack scale of difficulty. Maybe two per. Maybe two per. Does that mean you get one? I would hope so. What do y'all think? Should I give him one? Okay. But on a level of difficulty, if you're doing this on your own, it's a one beer level of difficulty. Okay. All right. So your biggest job is to make sure that that beer does not spill. Okay. And you're going to hand me tools when I need them. You got that? Got it. Okay. I think Van's got it. Okay. So I'm going to put on my gloves. You got the hex. Yes. You can open the beer now. Now on the beer scale, of difficulty. Why do I have a six pack scale? Well, I can handle changing out the brake pads. Depending on what kind of bike you have, if you have a lot of fairings and stuff, um, an oil change might be a two beer. On the VFR 800, it's a three beer because that oil filter is a to get out. It's like a, and you got to drop the radiator. And anyway, so that's a three beer. And then if you're changing out a, like a stator or a regulator rectifier or something like that, that would be a four beer, okay? I think you're getting the written, right? But if we make it to a six beer level of difficulty, I don't do those. But why do I have a number six? Because if it's a six level of difficulty, I take the beer to the mechanic. Okay, so good, you got it right. So we'll start with a little, let's get started. Hey, Hodis. Hold me a hoe. Are you holding it? Yes. There you go. All right. So, uh, you start. Where's my hex wrench? All right. By taking off the calipers. And they're usually a hence the first swig of beer. All right. So, this illustrates why the beer is needed to keep down the cussing because some idiot must have used air tools when they were working on my bike to put the calipers back on. Hence, I had to go get a breaker bar with an eight millimeter hex head socket. Now I can take them off 
with the T handle. Okay, and I remember the eight millimeter right here. Falling asleep on the job there, Bubba. Come on, Van. All right, and these are long bolts, so you're gonna do a lot of turning on the Tiger. Now, other bikes, you might not have such long bolts, but they will be stout bolts because your brakes are pretty important. They have a lot of um, torque on them, a lot of pressure on them. And so it's real important to have stout bolts that hold on the calipers. Okay, two bolts and the caliper slides off. Now, word of warning, stay away from the brake lever. Do not touch that brake lever. You touch that brake lever, you are going to be in a world of hurt because it's gonna push those brake pads together and you're not gonna be able to get them apart again. So essentially, you're So don't touch your brake lever. All right, that being said, you'll notice that the pistons are visible and the brake pads are pretty worn down. So what you're gonna need to do before you put the new brake pads in that are thicker, right? Because they've got the braking material on them. You're gonna have to push back all of these pistons. So leave the old brake pads in and get your handy dandy big ass screwdriver, your big bass. But before you do this, you're gonna loosen the cap on your brake reservoir. You wanna make sure that it's level so that the brake fluid doesn't spill. And we need a teeny tiny screwdriver to let this go, which I always have with me a teeny tiny screwdriver. So for my brake reservoir, I need a teeny tiny little screwdriver. And most brake reservoirs do require teeny tiny little screwdrivers. So my handy dandy multi-tool here. So I proceed to assemble my little screwdriver. There we go. Now you take the screws all the way out and it's always handy dandy if you can get one of those magnetic bolts to keep all your parts in. But I'm gonna give Van my little screw and he's gonna put them in a safe place so that when it's time to put them back on the brake reservoir, I don't have to go digging around. All right, so that's step one, I got a swig. Step two, loosen that brake reservoir cap. You don't have to take it off, you just gotta loosen it so that when you push the pistons back, the hydraulic fluid has somewhere to go. So you're not, so you're not fighting it. Next, put gloves back on because brake calipers and brake pads are nasty dirty. So I strongly recommend you have gloves. All right, so now we go at it with the bass and you just get in there and you pry them apart and that's gonna push the pistons in. Up, oh, one brake pad, put it back in. All right, and if you don't put your brake pads in the right way, I mean, if your brake pads fall out or you forget, just get a wooden shim or something that you can use to protect the pistons. You don't ever, 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 ever want to put something directly against the pistons because that will score the surfaces and ruin them. So don't do that. And you want the pistons all the way in because if they're not all the way in, then the calipers with the new brake pad aren't going to fit. You're not going to be able to put the calipers back on the rotor. There won't be enough room. So as you can see, these brake pads are pretty worn down. This was really close to uh, being totally bad and scoring my rotors. So you want to keep an eye on it. Make sure that you can still see those little ridges. That's worn down. Time to change it. And this is, oops, I'm f***ed. Don't ever ride with brakes that look like this. When you take your brake pads out, make sure to watch if there are any spacers on the backs or if there are any clips. And there aren't any retaining clips or spacers on this one. All right, now we need the new brake pads. Whoa, shiny new brake pads, look at that. So new brake pads, old brake pads. You can see the difference in the thickness, right? Okay. Okay. So now you've got the brake pads out. You want to clean your calipers and inspect them. Make sure everything's good. I'm out of brake cleaner. So we're going to pretend that I did that. 
Another thing you need is a scotch Bright pad and your brake cleaner. And you're going to clean off your rotor so that it's a nice, smooth, clean surface and get all the old brake material off of it. I'm working with what I got, so I haven't done that. Don't bitch at me. I need new brakes, so we're just going to make do and pretend that I use the scotch Bright pad to clean off the rotor and to clean my calipers. Okay, let's go. There we go. One down, one to go. Thank you. Every bike, there's gonna be a different trick to getting the brake pads in. Some are just gonna slide right in, and some, like this Tiger, are a bitch. Okay, so the trick is get the bottom all the way to the back, like angled back, and then push down on the spring and pop in your brake pad. Ta-da! Now, there should be plenty of room for this to pop back on the rotor. Should. If I push the pistons back enough. If I didn't push the pistons back enough, I'm going to have to go back and push the pistons back out. And look at that. It just slid right on. Brake pads on both sides. Okay, that's one. The other. Now, remember I said the bolts need to be stout and the brakes have a lot of pressure exerted on them but these bolts do not need to be torqued more than hand tight. You can crank down on them, but not more than hand tight. Do not use air tools on your brake cap. Okay, there we go. One side done. Now we do the other side just the same. Now we're gonna watch Van and see if he learned. Does that mean I can have a beer? That means you get to have a beer. Have it now? Yes, you can go get your beer now, Van. Thank you. All right, Van, you got all your tools? Are you sure? beer, We've got the tea handle, the bash, paper towels. Okay. Oh, because you're going to clean the caliper. You're going to clean. Okay. So, all right, let's get started. Take a swig of beer. There you go. Keeps the cussing down. All right. Now, what are you going to do? Now compress the pistons. Now compress the pistons. A whole lot of life left there. <laughs> Twist your pistons. Yep. Yeah, twisting that bass helps. Almost. You got one side. There you go. There you go. Okay, now the other side. Front and back. Okay. Now go to the middle to make sure they're both pushed in at the same depth. Okay, I think you got it. That looks about right. Next step. Next step. Now remember there's a spring in there so you push down to get them out. All right. All right, those had a little more life in them than the other ones. Now, this is a good time to tell everybody, um, everybody here is over the age of 21, and uh, you know you don't wanna be doing this with your eight-year-old having them drink. So, you know, remember, you gotta be 21 to make sure that uh, nobody underage is uh, using all the tools required for this job. Okay, pads are all good. We're gonna pretend that we cleaned the other rotor and cleaned the caliper and you've inspected it properly that it's good to go? Yes. Okay. Now you drop it in and push down and it should pop in. Nope, you didn't put the bottom back far enough. Uh, didn't. Sure. You got it? Yep. Yeah. Woohoo! One side. Just barely. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you got to get it on that spring and push. Maybe. Okay, now you got them in straight, both. What's next step? Good job. All right. Now, going to slide that caliper right back on the rotor. Look at that. Beautiful job. Yeah, it takes a little finagling to get it started. And those are long bolts. It takes forever for those to go in. Yep, just one ugga dugga. There you go. Boom! Look at that. All set. All set. Well done. Okay, so are we done? Not yet. Okay, what do we have to do? We need to finish the beer. No, not yet. What else do we need to do? Put the brake reservoir cap on. Put the brake reservoir cap back on. There we go, and I'll trade you. I will hold your beer. Thank you. You've earned it. I know. Yep. 
All right, dry it off real good. How are we done? Now we can finish the beer. No, now we need to pump the brakes. Okay, I will let you have the honors. So, once you've got the new brake pads in, you need to seat them. The first thing you do is you pump the brake lever a few times, give it five. And you can see in your brake reservoir that the fluid is going down to a normal level. You see it going down? Okay, try again, five more, until you feel some resistance. Are you feeling some resistance? All right, there you go. Now, obviously, because we have been imbibing, we are not going to take the bike out for a shakedown run. But the first time you take the bike out, you want to roll slowly and hit the brakes really hard a few times to seat the pads. Now are we done? Now can we finish the beer? Now we can finish the beer. And that's how you change out your brake pads. So if you found this helpful at all, please, please remember to like, subscribe, hit the little bell in the corner. And it really is important for you to subscribe to this channel um, so that I can keep making these videos for you. I hope you found it useful. So please hit that subscribe button, okay? Get out there and have an adventure.